A new super-Earth has been spotted by astronomers, and it's quite intriguing. This planet, called TOI 715b, is about one and a half the size of Earth, which is why it's called the super-Earth. It's also relatively close to us in space terms, only 137 light-years away. For comparison, most exoplanets are hundreds of light-years away. And all the interesting stuff, like black holes and nebulas, are usually more than thousands of light-years away from us. So, could it be habitable? The habitable zone is an estimate of where a planet might have the right conditions for liquid water. This is what we call some distance from the star where the temperatures on the planet should be okay-ish and water should stay liquid on its surface. It's not super precise, because it depends on a bunch of factors, like the type of star, how reflective the planet is, its size, and so on. Also, just being in this zone isn't enough for water to actually be there. The planet also needs the right kind of atmosphere and a few other things. So, we invented a stricter definition in 2014, the conservative habitable zone. It's a more precise term to finding the best candidates that have liquid water. Otherwise, we get too many potentially habitable planets that are not actually habitable at all. The CHZ is based on how much energy a planet gets from its star compared to Earth. If a rocky planet gets between 40 to 85 percent, it's considered to be in the CHZ no matter how far away it is from its star. These planets have a higher chance of being habitable. And yes, TOI 715b is located there. This super-Earth orbits the M-type star, also called Red Dwarf. It's a star that's much smaller and cooler than our Sun, about a quarter of the Sun's size and mass. But if the planet is located in the habitable zone, it's actually a better option for life. Red dwarfs live much longer than our Sun, a yellow dwarf. This also means that they have more time to form little creatures on their planets. And this red dwarf really is older than our star. Our sun is 4.6 billion years old, and this star is 6.6 .6 billion years old, give or take a few hundred million. It doesn't have much magnetic activity, so it's not dangerous. It doesn't flare up like younger red dwarfs. These flares can be super strong and might even hurt planets by taking away their atmospheres. Although some planets around it do have thinner atmospheres, it seems like this red dwarf has already gone all out. These red dwarfs are where we're looking for planets that could support life right now. Our super-Earth is really close to its star, zooming around it in just 19 days. Since the star is small and the planet is so close, the planet passing in front of its star happens a lot and looks really clear. This makes it easy for telescopes like the James Webb to study its atmosphere without needing too much time. Now, speaking of the James Webb Space Telescope, it's bringing us into a new era of understanding distant planets beyond our solar system. Imagine being able to see what gases make up the air on a planet millions of light years away. James Webb will help us to find worlds that could support life. Right now, it's trying to figure out whether TOI 715b has an atmosphere. If it does, its atmosphere might be easier to spot compared to a planet that's drier and denser. And then we might get even more height because it would look like a good place for life. On top of all that, there might be another planet in this system, also in the habitable zone. We're not sure whether it's really there, it's just a candidate with a crazy name. But if it turns out to be real, it would be about the size of Earth. Also, it would be the smallest planet in the habitable zone ever spotted by the TESS telescope. Now, another cool thing about TOI 715b is that it cannot just have water on it, but be an entire water world. An ocean planet is a type of planet that has an ocean covering its surface or has subsurface oceans. They might not have much dry land because the water can cover everything. Sometimes the entire planet can be covered in other liquids, like lava or ammonia. When it comes to planets outside our solar system, we can't see surface water directly with our current technology. Instead, scientists look for water vapor in the atmosphere as a hint there might be liquid water below. And of course, we wonder if these planets can have life, hopefully not in the form of leviathan-like monsters. 
Our models show that planets with oceans might be pretty common in our galaxy. This means there could be lots of ocean worlds out there waiting to be discovered. But the most important part about TOI 715b is that it's in the so-called small planet radius gap. If we give the planets a lineup, there will be those that are bigger and smaller than Earth. But there's a sudden gap in planets that are about from one and a half to two times bigger than ours. Where are they? This gap is interesting to scientists because it tells us something about how planets form and change over time. It's not that planets don't form in this size range. They actually start off larger and then lose some of their mass, like a balloon gradually deflating. Perhaps it happens because of how they orbit their stars, with stars blowing away some of their mass as they dance around it, as our sun does with gas from comet tails. This gap holds a lot of mystery, and planets, like our new super-Earth, are clues that could help us unravel it. We aren't sure whether it exists around red dwarfs. Maybe it's a gap in how dense these planets are, rather than in their actual size. So studying our discovered planet is even more interesting. It'll help us learn more about distant stars and their planets. Now, I mentioned TESS a while back. NASA's TESS, Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, has been in space for six years now and has been incredibly successful. NASA launched TESS because we already found over 5,000 planets orbiting other stars, mainly thanks to the Kepler telescope. But Kepler mostly found large planets, not necessarily like Earth. We decided to focus tests on finding smaller Earth-like planets around nearby bright stars, making them easier to study with future telescopes. Here's how it works. The camera observes stars and looks for changes in their brightness. If the brightness suddenly drops for a while and then gets back, it could mean there is a planet passing in front of it. But stars can dim for other reasons, too. For example, flaring up or having dark spots on their surface, which is why we need to be careful with this data. TESS shows us the size and orbit of these planets. Then ground telescopes help determine their mass. With these three parameters, we can figure out what the planets are made of and if they're rocky like Earth or gassy like Jupiter. Yeah, you want to avoid Jupiter after taco night. One example of TESS's discoveries was the TOI-700 system. There, it discovered its first-ever Earth-like planet, TOI-700d. This exoplanet also orbited a red dwarf, and it's even closer to us, about 100 light-years away. Unfortunately, it's unlikely to be habitable because the temperatures there are crazy. Another big discovery was made in the AU microscopy system. TESS discovered a planet about four times the size of Earth and another nearly three times Earth's size. This system has become a key area for studying how stars and planets form and change over time. TESS has also spotted a variety of other exciting finds, including supernova, hot worlds, and so on. And as it enters its sixth year, we can only expect more exciting findings to come. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.